Today we're going to be talking about in this video why Bitcoin is better than money. When we talk about money, we're talking about the traditional government issued dollar or government issued currency of whatever country you're in. Many of us invest in Bitcoin. Fundamentally, we believe it's a better solution to government issued currency. Now, if you like learning about cryptocurrency, you want to learn more about how this technology can affect us going forward in the future, because I promise you it's going to be playing a part in the future. And I'm going to show you in this video why that's going to happen. But if you want to learn more about this technology, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon and click all. I love to bring you content that teaches you all about cryptocurrency. So right here is a table I have up that says projected annual inflation rate in the United States from 2010 to 2021. Now in this video, I want to show you the effects of inflation, how this works, because most people don't understand this. I'm going to show you very simply how this works. I'm also going to show you there's a real possibility that inflation is much higher than the government has currently been telling us. This isn't a conspiracy. It's higher than what they tell us today. If we look at how they used to calculate inflation, we'll see that these numbers could be much, much higher. And that would explain a, a lot of the concern going forward with the current economic system. Also, I'm going to show you a major corporation who has already calculated that this could be a problem for them. And they're moving away from fiat, away from government financial instruments, and they're moving into Bitcoin. We're going to talk about why and read an entire news article on their explanation. So this is going to be incredible. There's going to be a lot of con covered in this video and if you've ever wondered why is bitcoin better than money you're going to find out in this video if you haven't done so already do me a favor ladies and gentlemen smash that like button let's get into this okay so this is a government's projected annual inflation rate in the united states from 2010 to 2021 and if you look at it you know it's 1.6 percent three percent two percent 1.4 1.6 almost nothing 1.2 2.1 2.4 1.8 2.2 so two percent a year you think about that what is that if you had a hundred dollars you'd need a hundred and one dollars and sixty cents essentially to to have to buy the same amount of goods and services if there's 1.6 percent inflation if there's three percent inflation you would need a hundred and three dollars at the end of the year but the to buy the same amount of goods and services as you would need at the beginning of the year the same hundred dollars now at first glance it doesn't look like much inflation at all in fact truthfully it's it's not really perceivable to the average person but let me show you something for a moment. Let's come to a calc let's just assume for round numbers that inflation, if it's accurate according to the government, if their own numbers are accurate, let's just say inflation averages 2% just to keep us round numbers. And let's just say that you have $100,000 that you've saved up. Maybe this is in a retirement fund or whatever. 2% interest a year over 10 years. Let's just see what that would be. Calculate. This is basically... Over 10 years, you would need $121,899 to buy the exact same thing that you were able to buy when you first saved that $100,000. Now, bear with me for just a moment because, again, some of you are like, okay, uh, where are you going with this? Well, let's just say it was 20 years, 20 years from now. Many of you are, are, are going to retire way in the future. Let's just say that you made some investments. Maybe you did a lot of savings. You saved up $100,000. You put it in your retirement account. And let's see what that same $100,000 would buy in 20 years at 2% inflation a year. Just 2% a year. That's it. What if it was more than that? Bear with me. And by the way, this is much bigger than your... You may think, I don't have a savings account. I'm not going to have a savings account. No, no, no. You don't understand. It's much bigger than that. If you have insurance, your insurance companies are able to pay out because they are able to hold large amounts of capital in some sort of financial assets. Those assets have to beat the rate of inflation. This is insidious. It occurs every single year. There's almost never a negative inflation rate, almost never. So if you saved up $100,000 or 2% a year over 20 years, then you would need $148,000. You would lose almost 50% of the value of your $100,000 just in 20 years. Now, let's just say 30 years. Some of you are very young. You have a long ways to go to retirement. You save up $100,000 today at 2% inflation. Calculate that out really quickly. You would lose almost 80% of the value. $100,000 a day, you would need $181,000 30 years from now to buy the exact same thing. Now, you're thinking wealth. I don't, where are you going with this? Well, that's assuming that there's only 2% inflation. But I want you to take a look at this. And like I said, this is bigger than you saving for retirement. 
The problem with inflation is it hurts anywhere someone has to hold some sort of financial reserves, whether it's your IRA, whether it's the 401k, whether it's the insurance company, everyone that has to hold some sort of reserves, inflation affects them. It's an insidious tax. But take a look at this. MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor explains why he chose Bitcoin over gold. During Binance Blockchain Week, MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor said that gold's return didn't look nearly as compelling as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a logical solution to the store of value problem, said MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor. Again, store of value. So MicroStrategy needs to have some sort of reserves for the future of their company. So they're trying to find a way to be able to hold that value so that value maintains Looking at the last 10 years, Bitcoin is not volatile at all. It's just going up, he claimed. Bitcoin is a 10-year investment for MicroStrategy. In the current environment of monetary inflation, this is what he's talking about, Bitcoin is a logical solution to the store of value problem, said Michael Saylor, CEO of business intelligence firm MicroStrategy. Saylor explained that the company's traditional strategy was to invest in sovereign debt but recent aggressive monetary expansion caused by coronavirus pandemic prompted MicroStrategy to look for alternative stores of value. So what he's saying is typically what we would do is we'd invest in sovereign debt, basically other countries' T-bills or treasury bonds. Like the U.S. sells T-bills and treasury bonds around the world. Maybe they bought U.S. treasury bonds or T-bills. Maybe they bought, you know, treasuries from other countries. But that's what he means when he says sovereign debt. Those debts historically pay an interest rate slightly ahead of inflation. So that would make sense in most cases. He said, but recent aggressive monetary expansion, because of the amount of, like in the U.S., for example, they're given a stimulus. The government doesn't have that money. They're having to borrow that money. They're having to create that money. They're going to raise minimum wage, for example, to $15 an hour. That's going to push the inflation bubble that much further, that much harder. And so he's basically saying because of the monetary expansion caused by the coronavirus pandemic, prompted it. He said MicroStrategy is looking for alternative stores of value. They don't think traditional sovereign debt and or gold will be able to keep up with inflation. As the firm was looking at a potential loss of roughly 15% of shareholder value on the cash balance per year, it considered investing in sovereign debt, stocks, derivatives, real estate, and precious metals. But they didn't cut it in the terms of returns compared to Bitcoin. In other words, their stockholders were going to lose money just because of their savings or their financial reserves because the financial reserves were going to get devalued with inflation. So they're looking for some sort of alternatives. The returns on gold didn't look nearly as compelling as Bitcoin, said Saylor, adding. So we eventually found crypto because in essence, in the crypto world, you can create a digital gold and Bitcoin is that digital gold. And so if you're looking for a non-fiat derivative store of value in an inflationary environment, that's what we're talking about, inflation, that's logical that you would settle upon Bitcoin as a digital gold. By the way, one more thing about gold. If you store a lot of gold, you have to pay storage fees. Typically, MicroStrategy doesn't have their own storage vault, their own security. You pay storage fees. Those storage fees can be a certain percent every single year as well. So not only do you have to overcome inflation if you're trying to hold on large amounts of gold, but now you have to think about storage fees as well. And if you're telling me, oh, but well, they don't necessarily buy physical gold. Yes, they do in some cases. But even if they were to hold paper gold through traditional fiat instruments, they have to overcome commissions and fees that's built into that as well. Speaking about Bitcoin's notorious volatility, Saylor said that MicroStrategy is not a trading company and thus is not concerned with the short-term fluctuations of price on a day-to-day -day basis. On the contrary, company, the company's Bitcoin purchase is actually a long-term investment. But we are making a 10-year investment. And if you look at Bitcoin over the course of 10 years, it's not volatile at all. It just, it's just going up, Sailor explained. He added that it really comes down to time preference. And if you're an investor, then you probably have at least four year time horizon, in which case near-term volatility isn't really consequential. If we wanted to avoid vol volatility, we would keep the cash, but we'd be 90% certain that we would lose 75% of our value over 10 years. That's the price of stability. Volatility, the price you pay in order to get appreciation, Taylor asserted. So they're, they're expecting inflation rate to go way higher than 10%, than 2%, sorry, because they think they could lose 90, they could use, lose 75% of their value in 10 years. So if we come over here, let's see, maybe 5% is what they're predicting over a 10 year period. Let's just take a look at that. 
Yeah, there's 62% right there. 6% inflation. I'm just wanting to calculate because they think in 10 years they could be losing. There, there's a, So about 5 to 6% inflation annually is what MicroStrategy is predicting. If you wanted to avoid volatility, we would keep the cash. But we'd be 90% certain that we lose 75% of our value over the 10 years. So they're 90% certain inflation is going to be between 5 and 6% per year. Think about that. Saylor acknowledged that if he was asked about Bitcoin in February of 2020, for example, he would have said that Bitcoin is just some kind of nuisance cyber digital crypto thing. He admitted that his mind was elsewhere, but while he wasn't well educated on the subject of Bitcoin just a year ago, his sentiments towards crypto have changed drastically since then. I think Bitcoin is a solution to a problem that you have to have the problem to appreciate the solution. That's so good. I tell people this all the time. People are like, Bitcoin's not ready for prime time. So many things wrong with Bitcoin. It's not technically ready. You can't transfer it quick enough. I say this all the time. I, Bitcoin is a solution to a problem, but you have to have the problem to appreciate the solution. So the problem becomes pretty paramount in March when the cost of capital goods goes from 5% to 15% for every company on earth. Now you have to find a treasure solution that will yield more than 15%, said Saylor. And Bitcoin can act as a store of value against monetary inflation for any corporation, public or private. They all have a debasement problem, meaning inflation debases the value. He said, adding that it's a logic solution to the store of value problem. Incredible. Incredible. Now, let's take a look at this. I told you this is a government's, this is their current prediction right here they're saying this is what they've predicted over the past 10 years now i'm not certain what they're predicting going forward but i want you to take a look at something this is a website called shadow government statistics now this is, website is a very very fascinating one of the bullet points here says panicked unlimited federal reserve money creation and federal government deficit spendings continue and will expand triggering major domestic meaning inside the country major u.s inflation now if you come over here and look at this is from the same website this is the alternate inflation charts. So if you look at the blue line, this is how they calculated inflation in 1980. Now they changed in 1980 how they started to calculate inflation. Now some people say the reason that they changed it is to artificially suppress the inflation numbers so people wouldn't realize how bad inflation was and it wouldn't create market panic. As you can see right here, the line started to diverge. And it went up. Now, this is 5% inflation. This is 0%. According to the red line, we've actually had some negative inflation. But it's been very low, under 5% over since 95. But if you start watching right here in 95, we, according to the way they used to calculate inflation, in 95, we were at 5%. Look at this. We've been as high as 10% based on how they used to calculate inflation before 1980. We went as high as, right here, we went as high as 12% probably. All the way back down, the lowest we've been since 95 is five, just over 5%. It's not crazy. I mean, let's go back to MicroStrategy. They're saying that they think inflation rate is going to be 5% to 6%. It's very possible it's been 5 to 6% this entire time. Now, here's what's important to recognize. Why is Bitcoin better than money? Nobody can print more Bitcoin. Nobody can print more Bitcoin. You can't inflate Bitcoin. This prevents bubbles. This prevents your savings from getting devalued over time, whether it's through 2% inflation, 5% inflation, or potentially much, much more. You don't have to worry about government adjusting statistics on your inflation. Your crypto is going to always be valued relatively the same and it, based on the free market conditions, and you don't have to worry about government manipulating it. Now, in this day and age, at this point, Crypto seem to be very volatile, but it's like the CEO of MicroStrategy says, Michael Saylor. That's when you look at it over a week to week, month to month. If you look at it over a longer term period, it just goes up. The more people hold Bitcoin, the more stable the price of Bitcoin is going to be. I believe long term, Bitcoin is going to go much, much higher. Bitcoin is a better economic solution than what we currently have available in our current money system where governments control the issuance of their money. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. By the way, I ultimately believe that Bitcoin is going to go north of $1 million per Bitcoin. I truly believe that. I actually think the math 
proves it. If you just do a little bit of basic math, I have a video that's been quite popular, ranks really well on YouTube right now for uh, Bitcoin going to $1 million. I'll link that on the end screen. You can go ahead and watch it. By the way, let me know what you think about this video down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think Bitcoin is better than money? And if so, why? And if not, let me know that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Do me a favor, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, click the bell notification icon. Stay tuned for more. If you like this type of content, I'm going to be bringing some more to you very, very soon. I also got a video tutorial coming up. You're not going to want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.